played one sport and one sport only, and that was baseball. In, in high school, my junior and senior year, we won back-to-back -back state championships, and I was recruited to play Division One baseball at Washington State University. I played shortstop. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to field a ground ball. I know that may seem somewhat self-explanatory, but I assure you, mastering the task of fielding a ground ball is very difficult. You may be asking yourself, how does this apply to me, or you may not like baseball in the first place, but I assure you, the skills you learn positioning yourself before a play takes place is transferable across all sorts of sports. Today I'm going to talk to you about three main things. First, how to position yourself before the ball is hit. Second, how to position yourself after the ball is hit. And third, how to field the ball and make an accurate throw to your target. I assure you that all of these skills are essential in fielding a ground ball efficiently. To begin, the first thing that we do is we begin, we begin to creep, like this. And we start creeping once the pitcher starts his motion or starts throwing it towards the bat. After this, we do something called a hop, just like this. And the reason we do this, the goal of this is to land right when the ball is making contact with the batter's bat. The reason we do this is we're on the balls of our feet ready to react to whichever direction the ball is hit. Now I'm going to talk about step two, which is positioning yourself after the ball is hit. Personally, I feel like this is the most important step. Um, there's two main parts of this step. One, getting the hop or bounce that you desire as a fielder, and two, positioning yourself so that when you do field the ball, you're in, the, you're in a position where your momentum is heading towards the direction of your throw. So let's first talk about hops or bounces. There are three main types of hops, a short hop, a middle hop, and a long hop. These are somewhat intuitive in that uh, the last hop is a certain distance away from your body when you're fielding, fielding the ball. For example, a short hop is around three to four inches from your glove after the, after the last hop, and a long hop is around 10 to, 10 to 12 feet. The most optimal hop is a short hop and a long hop because it's the most predictable. As a fielder, it is our job to get the hop that we desire that allows us to feel the ball most efficiently. Our goal is to get a short hop or a middle hop because we know where the ball is most likely going to go. Now let's talk about the second part, positioning ourselves when we feel the ball in order to throw, throw the ball effectively and, and accurately towards our target. For example, let's say I get a ball hit slightly to my right. I, I want to position myself so I create an angle, in this example, to throw towards first base. I don't want to make a direct route towards the ball I want to do something called squaring up the ball, where I get around the ball and come through it. So when I do field it, I'm in a direction where my 